What's up everyone, Sean Astrom here. In today's little video, I'm gonna show off how you can use the new Redshift volume displacement that was recently added in the latest Cinema 4D 2024.4. This is a pretty exciting new feature that a lot of us have been waiting for. And so yeah, let's dive in and take a look at how to set it up. So first thing I'm gonna do is bring in a sphere and let's set the radius to something like 500. I'm gonna crank up the segments to like 256. And that's looking good. And we're actually going to build a little bit of a planet atmosphere here because, yeah, I recently released some new planetary texture maps, Terrestrial Volume 1 CG Exoplanets. And this is a pretty amazing little collection of 16K crazy detailed planetary maps that you can, yeah, head on over to sastudios.xyz and check them out there. So yeah, I spent a lot of time kind of building these out to represent different climates. And then we have some hero maps if you just want to throw these onto a sphere and get some awesome exoplanet renders going. But if we, yeah, if we dive into Redshift here in Cinema 4D and we bring in a new standard material, and then go to the node editor. One thing that you need to do to bring in the new volume standard shader, or standard volume rather, is to actually bring it in through here. If you go here, and for the time being, if you were to go materials and bring in a volume here, it still brings in the older Redshift volume. And I'm sure they're keeping this in here for legacy purposes and backwards compatibility. But moving forward, I would de definitely recommend just using the, the new standard volume here. And we, wa we want to also plug this guy into the volume port here, and we, we can get rid of the uh, standard surface here. And we also, so let's get rid of that guy, we also need to probably bring in some lights. So let's bring in a area light. And I'm going to set this to be a sphere. And uh, let's crank up the intensity a little bit, maybe like 500, and pull this back. And I don't know, maybe this is a star off in the distance. Uh, so here's kind of what we got going on here. Let me change my resolution to be square. And yeah, that should be good for playing around here. If I scoot this even further back and then kind of maybe increase the exposure, we'll get something a little more representative of what we what we might get from like a star and yes yeah, so let's go back to so let's just say for all intensive purposes this is our planet not planet planet and then let's create one and call it atmo for the atmosphere <clears throat> So for the atmosphere, we'll want that to be a little bit larger. So let's go 525 maybe. And let's just, I'm gonna hop into the, oh, what is this thing called? I still, for the life of me, wanna call this the content browser, but it is now the asset browser. Um, so if you add, if you add your files from your hard drive as watch folders, they will just show up in this neat little folder here. And this kind of works a little bit like the old content browser in that now you can bring in your, any files you have on your hard drive can, will just always be in this watch folders category, which is fantastic. So I'm going to bring in for, well, let's create a new material for our actual planet material. I'm gonna bring in some maps here quickly and for this one, I think I'm just going to bring in these hero maps. So if you go uh, hero A, we'll go hero A base color here, and then let's bring in the height, and then let's bring in the roughness. It's taking a second to load the height because it's a pretty big file. Um, and that's where a lot of the power comes with these maps is the height maps are crazy detailed. All right, so let's see here. My, my mouse seems to have gotten stuck there. Let me, there we go. <clears throat> Sometimes when you're recording videos, they tend to, programs tend to behave a little differently than you might normally be used to. Okay, so here we have this hero map. I'm going to plug it into the base color. I'm going to plug in the uh, roughness here to the roughness. And then I'm actually just going to bring in a bump map. We'll use the height map to generate a quick bump on here. And the last thing we want to make sure and do is select these. And I like to manually set the 
uh, color space to the to the appropriate setup here. So for for data maps like roughness, for example, we want to definitely set that to raw. And then for color maps, we want to set that to sRGB. This height map, we also want to set to raw. So if I just throw this onto my planet, see here what's going on here. And just like that, you can see we get this awesome planet map. And this is wrapping seamlessly all the way around our model here. And we can see that by rotating this. Let's get a cool kind of like angle of the, the water side here. And then I'm gonna bring in a null, pop this light in here. That'll kind of be the center of our light or our star. And we'll make a quick copy of this and rotate this maybe to the other side so we can get some rim lighting going on. And I'll change the color of that to something kind of interesting maybe. Okay. <clears throat> So this is our planet and let's bring in a camera and crank up the focal lengths. We have something more like a telescope might do. Crank up the exposure a little bit on that main light to the left there. Okay, so let's just say this is our planet. Also, let me get in here and crank up the height scale on the bump and this will just bring in a little bit more of the details there. And that's looking pretty nice. I'm just gonna also scale this down just a hair just to speed up the render preview there. So yeah, so that's how easy it is to kind of set this up with these maps. And now let's turn on our atmosphere and I'm gonna stop the render preview and let's go bring in a volume builder. And this is what's so cool about this feature in cinema with the volume builder we can quickly create vdbs essentially right inside of cinema here so by default the voxel size is set to 10 which i actually think for the size of our geometry here at 525 that's giving us a fair amount of detail i might drop it down to like eight but let's we'll, we'll know more once we get into the standard material here or the standard volume rather so if if we throw this onto our volume builder here, let's fire up the render view, you'll see right away that we don't really get much. And the reason for that is we need to, under the uh, main density channel, we need to put whatever name we have here for our volume builder, we need to put that within the channel here. So now that I've added this, it's, it's important to note that I did rename this to Atmo. And sometimes you have to kind of re-fire up the render view in order for that to show up. And now you can see that we are getting some sort of density here. And it's it's not really mapped the best, so we need to select the volume builder. Well, yeah, we definitely need to set this to fog if we want it to behave like a fog volume. And let me reset the render view here. There we go. And then the, the other thing we need to do is we need to select the geometry here, and we need to adjust the voxel fall off. So you can check this maximum fall off here, which gives you pretty good results, but I actually like to kind of set this to a value of like 25. And that seems to work really well for atmospheres and other things where you where you want a little more detail. So I am going to lower this voxel down to like, oops, not 65. Let's try six and get this to refresh. For some reason, now that I'm recording this video, of course, I'm having to manually uh, restart the render view, which is a little strange, but no worries there. So we have our standard volume here, and right out of the gate, if I start to play around with the depth, this will kind of adjust the density of the, the volume here. And if I were to crank this past one, I think I can, yeah, then, then, we can then we'll start to see kind of a little more of a transparent volume, which is kind of what we want in this case. And if I tint this to blue and tint this a little bit to orange, we'll start to get that kind of nice planetary atmosphere look. And we can even play with the anisotropy and that will give us a little bit more sort of directionality in the way the light is going through the volume. But you can see quite quickly that this is already working really well as an atmosphere. But moving on to the actual fun part, let's get some displacement going. So what we can do is bring in a noise, in this case a Maxon noise, good old Maxon noise, 
And I'm going to set this to Nakai. It doesn't really matter for right now. And then I'm also going to definitely crank up the scale to, let's say, 100 to start. Now, what we can do is I can go into the density parameter here. And if I Alt or Control click this dot here, that's going to bring up a density input. And right away, I can plug this noise right into the density. And we can kind of see some of what's going on there at the top of the atmosphere. We can kind of see a little bit of noise going in there. And this goes back to our scale value. By default, if it was set to 1, you won't even notice anything. And it's really important to go in here to the scale and crank that up to a higher value. So in this case, with our sphere being pretty large, I'm going to match it at around 500. And that seems to be pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and actually hide the planet, or turn it off. And then we'll get a better sense of what's going on with this volume here. So yeah, looking pretty good. And now this currently is just modulating the density, which works pretty well. But what we want to do is actually start to play around with displacement, which it's kind of strange with the way this works. The density input is actually where we, where we set up our displacement as well with Redshift. And I believe they did this rather than adding an additional displacement port that would kind of be, it'd kind of be calculating the same math twice. And I think they did this for performance reasons. So always appreciate that. So I'm gonna put this back to zero. And in order to get this to work, we need to bring in a volume scalar attribute. And then we really wanna be modulating the position offset. So if we control click this and bring up the position offset port, we'll get that going. And if I plug this into the density, you'll see that nothing happens. Really important, um, we also need to let Redshift know that we also wanna uh, be using the same um, VDB channel, and in this case, it's our um, named atmosphere here. And you can see that brings back our volume. And if I plug our max on noise right into this, you're going to see that you, you don't really get much. And if I crank up the contrast again to one, again, like we're not getting much. And that's because we need to kind of remap these values. Yeah, so let's bring in a vector change range and actually it's probably easier to just search change range and let's bring that in and, and by default cinema's noises are mapped kind of from zero to one and we want to set that up so it's actually from negative one to negative one or negative one to positive one and we can do that with the vector change range and if we pop that in here turn on our render view here you can see we're still not getting much and that is because we need to also multiply the values with a multiply node and really push these values into a range um, where the volume scaler can really start to see what's going on. So if I crank this up to 200, now you can see that we're getting some nice displacement going on in our volume. So kind of a, a few steps there, but once you start playing around with it, it, it kind of starts to make sense. And then inside the actual volume scalar attribute node, we can adjust kind of the, the min and max sort of, could almost think of this as like the, the amount of the displacement. <clears throat> so if I lower this and kind of play around with these values, you can see we're kind of pushing the displacement inward. And yeah, so this is really a good spot to kind of tinker around with the displacement. And yeah, that's kind of the setup. So let's turn back on our planet. And now we kind of have this crazy, maybe this atmosphere is being stripped away because its star is turning into a red giant and burning up the atmosphere. But yeah, so <clears throat> pretty cool stuff. I'm really stoked that this functionality is now inside of Redshift. And of course, it renders really quickly, which is super nice. So of course, this would work well for clouds. But I, but it is kind of nice to just bring in a little bit of detail in the atmosphere. Um, if I were actually trying to make something look good here, I'd probably do <clears throat> a lot less, maybe get into the actual noise here and play around, like decrease the contrast a little bit. Um, and get something more along these lines if I just wanted to bring in a little bit of extra detail. 
something like this looks kind of cool and then going into the actual standard volume shader here and playing around with the color values can be kind of fun I have noticed that the saturation on the colors is super sensitive so you just want to be kind of pretty delicate with that and yeah guys so that's kind of the the gist if we wanted to get even more detail we could always go into our actual volume builder object here and decrease the voxel size to bring in just more detail in the actual volume and yeah that's kind of just a quick look at the new standard volume shader within redshift uh, 3.6 thanks so much for checking out this video guys